Well, welcome everybody uh, to the this today's BQE lecture. Um, I'm Leon Tadavosian, one of the adjuncts. I'm very happy to have uh, one of my Tanzan FRE colleagues, uh, Rosa Galeva, speaking today. Rosa has deep experience in the derivatives markets, both in model validation, strategy, and so on. I heard a very interesting talk that she gave, I guess, last year about the yes. whole idea about performance of oil futures from a modeling perspective. And she's going to give us some insights today on um, more recent developments in the market. Uh, she has a PhD in, in physics um, from Moscow State University. She's worked at Morgan Stanley for many years, both in evaluation group and strategy and so on. And I actually co-taught our graduate um, risk management course with Rosa under David Chimko's um, direction about three years ago. So I'm um, happy to turn it over to Rosa, but then let me just say first that uh, the Peter Carr Memorial Conference, which is being organized by the department, will take place June 2nd to 4th in Brooklyn. That's a Thursday to a Saturday. And there will be a email circulated in, uh, to, as a call for papers sometime soon. And next week, a week from today on Thursday, we have Stefan Strom from WPI, who was a visitor to the Tannen department um, a couple of years ago, uh, giving the, the next uh, BQE lecture. And without further ado, Rosa, I'm looking forward very much to um, <laughs> hearing your comments. Thank so you. let me share the screen. Let me let me share the screen for you. Um, uh, I will know. I'll share the screen. Oh, you're okay. Very. You're all set. We don't okay. have my slides, so okay. yeah, I was working on them until last moment. Um, thank you very much for coming in, Leon. Uh, first of all, big thanks to you for stepping in because uh, David was uh, unable to to do this, and you graciously stepped right last minute when we thought everything will should be cancelled. So uh, we re I really appreciate it a lot. You know, oh, you've been very active. I, I know um, in all this seminar, you, whenever I come, whenever I would come, you were there, right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes, so uh, today actually um, um, I'm presenting uh, something which I kind of started to present one year ago when um, uh, our uh, beloved Peter was, um, was a host and um, to tell you the truth, I uh, really looked very much forward to uh, to show this uh, to Peter. Uh, we I actually work on this much more, and the, now this this paper has been published. There, it wasn't still kind of it had, it has not wasn't finished quite, and um, and of course it's it's a great pity. But um, I, um, um, I I I will. I will bring Pete, uh, memory uh, of Peter back because you know I, I have a lot of uh, memories and a lot of um, even expressions and everything um, uh, with me, and it will stay forever, I guess. Um, so um, I really wanted to show this this to him, but um, because we never had chance to discuss it, but you know we never had chance for many things as we understand now, and uh, but unfortunately we cannot go back, um, that's, the, that's the bad truth. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so let me share the screen and let me start this, uh, uh, this, this presentation. Uh, Leon, do I have like 40, 45 minutes? Sure, or? yeah. Now, would you mind, Rose, that people interrupt you during your talk or you want to wait? No, absolutely not, up. absolutely not. Okay, right. so feel free and, to um, Yeah, I will be watching time and if I, you know, if the, because I didn't rehearse this recently. I don't know how long it will take. Will it be longer, shorter, whatever? Whatever it is, I will just go and then, you know, we can stop and that's 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 fine. I will try to explain the main uh, the main result um, in that uh, time, right? In that allocated time. So uh, let me share the screen. <clears throat> and um, so this is, um, this is uh, this is my presentation, um, and I call it. Um, I thought a lot about it, uh, how to call it. And, uh, I had this. Uh, <clears throat> um, Greenland. Oh, that's great. Um, um, I had this um, title before I when I did um, talk at um, 
uh, Bloomberg, back to Bachelier, like, you know, uh, back to the future, right? So <laughs> in a way, like going back to this old model, um, but then um, rename it just oil futures volatility smile in 2020. It's still that was very interesting period when I work with um, uh, several of my students and actually I talked about this year ago. And this is kind of closure of, of, this, um, of this work. And um, again, kind of finished work, which I started um, in actually in 2020. So first of all, I'd like to uh, talk about Bachelier model. And he immediately, I should say, that Bachelier model was uh, one of the favorites of, uh, of Peter. Uh, he was very, very fond of Bachelier model for many reasons, I guess. And I remember actually when first he was telling me and writing like as usual, you know, on the piece of paper, it was probably back in 2010, I think, when he just started at Morgan Stanley. And um, I actually, today I'd look at the Google Scholar and I found Bachelier model mentioned in, in his paper, at least probably 10. And the last one was 2021 even, so, you know, he, uh, to the last day, he was uh, really very, um, very fond of this uh, bachelor model. And for that reason, of course, um, I also like it a lot. And first of all, of course, you know that bachelor model uh, can be considered like a origin of mathematical finance. And we can safely say that we can trace it back to 1900 when the French postgraduate post surgeon Louis Bachelier successfully defended at Sorbonne his thesis uh, um, theory de la speculation. Um, it was, uh, it's, it's been very, very popular. Uh, well, first of all, it's simple, very uh, elegant, and it has numerous applications, right? Uh, for example, um, because, you know, my, my background is commodity, immediately I can point out uh, that common the spread option on futures um, are very um, good to apply this model because we're looking at um, underline as a spread between two futures. So therefore it can be negative, positive. There is no, um, no restriction as in, um, in log normal world. Um, and that's actually was being used by CME group for pricing uh, calendar spread option on various commodity futures. Another application is interest rate options. <clears throat> And now, um, as you remember, uh, perhaps about um, what it is, if almost two years now, um, in spring 2020, we observed quite phenomenal um, historic event when ever for the very first time in the history, major oil futures contract, WTI, May contract, it was a prompt contract, very first one for, uh, which was traded, fell as slow as minus uh, 37, um, point 66. So it was not like minus several cents, right? It was really substantial minus, right? And uh, following this event, CME announced a switch to a uh, bachelor option pricing model, um, naturally, because um, they say they need to accommodate negative strikes, negative prices and the line futures, and now allow for this new option with negative strikes. So the objective of um, this, this paper and this talk is to, um, to, uh, to, to analyze uh, volatility smile. Um, and uh, we, I, we're looking specifically at WTI, right? Oil, it's uh, my favorite commodity. Um, and because of these um, events, it's very natural to think about comparing black and bachelier um, smiles, volatility smile, right? And, uh, and now because of these events, we have very unique data and this is a great opportunity um, to do really nice analysis because before that it would probably would be more theoretical because we never ever seen that kind of data, right? It was quite phenomenal. And, and normally um, what I should say that um, if you have very, you know, strong skew, which I will define a little bit later, uh, then it kind of creates uh, model risk because, you know, because uh, of course market data is not ideal, you have to interpolate, extrapolate, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you probably prefer have flatter smile, right? And so in this sense, 
if we start asking which model is better, especially in those um, unusual times, you know, that's kind of question we answer, I, I'm answering, right? So which model you would prefer to use um, in certain conditions? So we will try to answer this uh, question uh, totally. For that reason, we will be comparing the traditional black smile to uh, the batch of your counterpart. Um, uh, and we will especially will be looking when what happens uh, when we have uh, really extreme cases, extreme volatility, right? Rosa, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, as far as kind of a yardstick for what is more, um, I guess, economically plausible, what if you have a situation, let's say, where you saw that the options on the near-term contracts gave you a flatter smile in the Bachelier world, but options on the a further contract gave you a flatter smile in the log normal world, right? That's actually normal, doesn't happen normally when we saw that. All right, because so, what I was gonna say was if that were the case, I mean, would that be a yardstick that you would use to sort of like, you know, um, uh, endorse your your model, uh, so to speak? Well, you know, I mean, you cannot separate one contract with another. Of course, there's high correlation right in there. There's a, a lot of co-movement. So I cannot, I really cannot say in my experience in the data of which I, I carefully looked at, um, I never saw the situation when, you know, you have, uh, this is kind of consistent. Maybe this uh, difference, right, be really beca uh, becomes less or more pronounced. And normally, of course, obviously it's more pronounced in the prompt contract rather than, right, because of the extreme volatility in the prompt futures. Uh, but um, saying that something, well, actually, you know, there is one little very strange example I will show you later. Yeah, that's actually exactly uh, to illustrate your point that um, in prompt contract we saw unusual behavior, but what that was for a reason, you know, and explain that uh, uh, in, in, in detail why actually we saw difference in, in comparison in the prompt contract versus uh, longer contract, right? Thank so um, to provide the rational, right, so do things kind of um, uh, more, um, more, with more arguments, we um, look at, I look at a lot of, at the, pay, at the paper, the literature, and I found this a couple of papers by Grunspan, which were perfect actually for the purpose, and we'll, I will be using their results. And as I said, the published paper, this published paper appeared in the review of derivative research. I, um, I was not able to do it open access, but you can, so you, if you click, right, so here, if you click, this is clickable link, I will, um, um, send the slides, you can see it, but you cannot download it, um, at least not from this um, link. So now we start talking about differences and kind of laying the foundation, uh, and then uh, we will look at real data, because to me, data always has the ultimate truth and wisdom, right? So you look at the data and it tells you everything which is going on. So if we look at Black versus Bachelier, <clears throat> So the very uh, first thing, which of course is different, is different assumption on the distribution of returns of underlying. So in the bachelor, we assume the returns are normal, while in Black Scholes we look at a um, uh, uh, log normal case, right? So right, and um, so therefore, uh, what what has, what's going on here in the bachelor model? We consider when we say volatility smile, we will look at volatility of arithmetic returns of prices, right? Therefore, dollar volatility. So it's not like a volatility in classical sense. Um, it attached that uh, dollar value, right? <clears throat> and so if, uh, for example, if we look and uh, calculate bachelor year, well, we, what we will do, we will calculate a uh, difference in prices, right? And then normalize by square root time of, uh, of time difference between two days. Uh, and that standard deviation will give us bachelor evolve. If we uh, we are in the traditional Black Scholes world. We will study volatility of traditional log returns. So, so in that case, we will take our data. We will take log returns, right? So we'll take log of the uh, ratio and normalize by the time difference square root, right? 
So this is number one. Number two, the moneyness, when we look at the option in bachelor world versus a black. And actually, by the way, I never use, I don't use uh, options on spot, right? This is not commodities. Most of the trading, it happens in the future. So it is more typical to have um, options on futures, not on, so it's a black model, not black short, but black. So the second um, important element that the moneyness of an option in bachelor world would be measured between uh, by the distance between strike and future price, right? While if we look at black, uh, black shows, then the traditional moneyness is um, natural log uh, K divided by F, right? So here again, this is, um, the, we have dollar here, right? Dimension dollar. And here we have no dimension because we look at the logarithm of uh, uh, the ratio. So in order uh, to give rationale why actually, why in, in fact there is difference in volatility smiles of two model, um, we, um, uh, so we, we follow the following uh, program. First of all, um, and I feel this is very important, um, we need to define a kind of non-parametric way to measure what, how we measure the skew volatility smile. Right. Of course, uh, we can. We have there are very um, classical and very well known parameterization like SVI, right, by Jim Gatteral. But the problem is that you need to calibrate, and then uh, which is not very trivial, and then um, take some derivatives at the money, etc. Which is I find it's not very convenient. So instead, um, there um, I prefer to use some. Um, non-parametric way where we define um, notion of normalized strike, right, which will involve moneyness, whatever moneyness we, we have in mind, implied volatility and time to expiration, right. So the number one measure is cube. Secondly, uh, <clears throat> study the data, right. So uh, we use CME options data and um, um, then based on the, uh, this, these theoretical results from the paper, which I will show uh, shortly, um, that um, actually this data supports this relationship and it does uh, in a very wide range of expirations of volatilities, but, but there, are, um, uh, there are deviations and uh, those happen at the time of crisis when we look at a very low strikes in very high walls. So this becomes not the case, right? So this relationship uh, break. And, um, and now uh, based on this uh, relationship, which uh, you know, I, I keep promising to show, uh, to show you, uh, we, um, uh, we demonstrate that under negative skew environment, bachelor skew is weaker than black skew. So, and that's actually will be the case and it will feel very, very natural why it is this, that like this. And, uh, but then if we are on the positive skew environment, it will become the inverse relationship. Bachelor skew will be stronger than black skew. And I will give plenty of examples because again, there's a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, data, uh, data kind of confirmation and um, analysis. So first of all, let me start with um, uh, just reminding, putting down uh, the <clears throat> formula for black um, black price and bachelor price, which is coal, right? I remember uh, Peter, for some reason, always would use put option, right? Whenever he was talking about options, he would, for some reason, he liked puts. Uh -huh. I am a coal person. I don't like puts because puts are pessimistic, right? And to me, I like optimism. So I like coal when, you know, when we look at the four high prices, better, better, better. <laughs> Uh, better future, etc. But I know Peter would always use put for for some reason. Uh, he actually, I assume um, <clears throat> there is not interest rate. I think interest rate, especially in that crisis time, they were practically zero. So I kind of remove it from the picture, not to bother. Right? So they are zero. Um, so we have classical black. Um, formula, right, which of course, uh, we know, you know very well. And then bachelor counterpart, where it's um, in fact, uh, we have also normal cumulative functions um, and, um, but also the standard normal distribution, right? And what is different actually, and it took me some time to realize 
um, there is one fundamental difference between do, these two models uh, because um, uh, black option prices are bounded, right? So there is a bound, upper bound on the call option and the put option as well. Uh, for example, if we look at put option, uh, the favorite of Peter, right? Put option is bounded by strike, right? So if interest rate is zero, it's bound in a strike. But if we look at bachelor year option, there is no bound. And that's actually, and that's in fact gets us to uh, very important consequences. Because, for example, um, if we look at um, one particular example, uh, was put option, very low strike, and was uh, um, right um, at that, um, uh, actually, right after this negative price, negative price occurred on April 20th. So this is, was slightly several days late, April 24th. Then the line contract was August 20. Future price was pretty low. Right, but if the front was even lower, right, it was contango, and the strike was extremely low, right, and the time to expiration is about like, um, you know, about less than three months, right, 0 0.22, and the quote which was given from the market is 0 0.44, right. So if we pl plot these uh, two prices as a function of dollar wall versus log normal wall, you see because. Um, the the quote if you look at this quote is 44 which is not very far from the the from the upper bound right and here you kind of slow down uh, the behavior the, the growth of the option with volatility slows down quite a bit because it cannot go higher than 0 0.5 uh, and for that reason to achieve that um, option code you need extremely high volatility right it's like almost um, nine, uh, you know, nine, 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 950%, right? Uh, while if you look at the behavior of bachelor price, um, then you don't need any extremes, you know, you achieve this, uh, this, 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 uh, this price with very reasonable dollar wall, because if you compare like uh, with 23, it's not like 900%, right? It's only about, I don't know, 100 um, 30, 40, something like that, but a reasonable number. It's not like ex this extreme. And, um, and, and this already shows that a black model might have a problem when you have regime of a very, very low uh, strike and very high, I mean, and then in, in, inevitably high walls. So now I start um, implementing that program. I look at the um, definition of um, um, measuring skew, like how we measure the skew. <clears throat> so standard skew definition, we look at ATM slope of volatility smiles, which means we parameterize volatility, right, as a function of moneyness, say little like Z or K, whatever. And then we, uh, whatever is this function, we have to differentiate it and put the, a, um, the money is equal to zero, right? And that the slope at that at the money um, of this volatility will be um, the skew. That's classical definition. That's what SVI defines skew. Uh, but then we will have to choose particular small parameterization, which are kind of very reluctant to do because it involves a lot of uh, actions and assumptions and fitting, and which is quite inconvenient. So it's much better, in my opinion, to follow non-parametric way. And um, one way, for example, in FX world, we look at so-called risk reversal, right? So we look at the difference. We, we are now in, uh, in this, uh, this space of Delta, right? And then we uh, choose Delta um, uh, 25 highest strike, right? Or call option in Delta 75, which is low strike. And then look at um, volatility in these two uh, reference point and the difference give, gives us risk reversal. But then delta, of course, depends on the volatility. So you have to, uh, you know, uh, back solve all this equation all the time, which I also, so, so first I tried to use that, but then I kind of give, uh, gave up and decided instead to use so-called normalized strike, which was introduced in several papers prior. And what it is, it's uh, actually very nice and quite natural what we do. Uh, in log normal case, we will take the moneyness, but then we normalize it by, um, uh, at the money wall, right, log normal wall, um, and then score it of time, right? So this is dimensionless, this is dimensionless, and this is dimensionless strike. 
um, this is log normal. In bachelier case, what we will do, we will take like minus in bachelier world, which means we'll take a um, difference between strike and future price. It now we normalize it by uh, the money goal in square root of time. And uh, then what we can do, we can uh, define some level, right? So um, this psi equals chi, chi zero, some positive number, and then uh, look at these two corresponding strikes and define Q as a difference between implied volatility at highest strike and implied volatility at uh, lowest strike, right? And that difference, for example, would be some kind of generalized um, risk reversal. Right now, it's not connected to delta. It's connected to where we choose um, at the money of all, right? And, that's, um, and this is kind of, I feel this is uh, um, kind of very natural way to me to when we talk about volatility smiles, use normalized strike, right? And um, in, in, in this paper, in, in um, illustrations, the choice was made uh, that this um, level is equals one, right? Which is not 25% delta, um, it's, um, uh, I think it's lower, but um, um, it's pretty reasonable, right? Um, you can do a different choice, it's okay, but, um, um, and what is, of course, important that if we're given a choice, we can always, you know, normal, uh, at the money wall, pretty liquid thing, right? You will have a uh, quote in the market. So that's uh, that should be pretty straightforward to find this at the money wall. So which means that if you have this choice, um, um, psi zero equals one or plus, uh, minus one, right? You can back solve for the corresponding strike. It's pretty straightforward, right? And you don't need to deal with this back solving equations when you use delta. This is much easier because you will fix at the money wall and then just look for corresponding strikes. So this is um, I. Uh, that's what I meant by skew. You know this discrepancy in a too high and low strike um, defined in this way. So you yeah, so you so you choose your. That, what is that Greek symbol again? Is that psi? I don't remember the name of that it, symbol. It is normalized, right? I call no, it I meant, normalized. No, I meant the, the Greek, the Greek uh, letter, um, the, the, um, the Greek letters. Yeah, letter. I call it psi. The psi, yeah. So in other words, what you're saying is you, given the at the money vol and the time to expiration, mm -hmm. you solve for the value K, right? Yeah, and so I choose the level and then I back yes. solve for K. Right. Yes. So you, feel, you know what the left side is, you solve for K, and those mm -hmm. give you the two strikes where you're going to compare the implied. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And actually, what is nice about that, that uh, because of the score rate of time, right? Um, this is, um, you know, you kind of normalize time. You, you take not just that particular time, right? But you can do it across different, uh, different contracts with different expirations because you involve um, the, this element. Yeah. And I would assume that. Although you're not really at delta minus 0.25 or plus 0.25 exactly, I would suspect that because of the normalization by root t, pretty mm -hmm. much it's the same two delta values, no matter what the expiration is, I would assume. Uh, not quite, but yeah, but that's the idea. Yes. So you want to okay. unify uh, the maturities. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, understood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, and now I'm uh, looking at this relationship between black and bachelor volatilities. And as I said, it was done in the papers by Grunspan. 2011, there is another also, Rutkowski also published a paper. And what they do um, is pretty straightforward. What they do is they look at time value of call option, which they define as a call option minus in three, um, you know, intrinsic value, right? And then they express it through incomplete gamma functions and then they do expansions, right? And they use uh, this um, uh, elegant theory of trans series, which is not like the small arguments, but big arguments rather. So it's uh, a little bit mathematically, it's kind of interesting. I think I will also ask Peter at time, um, he mentioned that he heard about this, but he did not look at that uh, deeply. Um, because I, I think he would he would like that. <laughs> he kind of like that, uh, this kind of stuff. Um, so, um, and then this, uh, <clears throat> this expression, right? It, it is uh, incomplete gamma function of the following arguments. In the bachelor case, again, we will look at the money, but now it is square. And then we take also square of, uh, um, you know, that's um, thing which appeared in normalized strikes will be sigma squared. 
uh, normal volatility multiplied by T. And here we look at the argument like this. And what he established is that when uh, um, the maturity is very small, uh, then he uses asymptotic expansion of a complete gamma function and establishes the following relationship that, in fact, what should follow this um, two arguments should be approximately the same up to some precision, right? And uh, if you assume that, what you have immediately because of this, that Bachelier and black wall approximately has to be uh, connected by the following a very, very elegant expression, like you actually what it is, it is just the ratio of moneylessness, right? So this is bachelor moneyness, this is black moneyness. And um, when, of course, um, when K equals F, you have to do uh, expansion or you have just look more carefully what you have. Um, this is quite natural, right? So bachelor wall roughly is price multiplied by black wall when you look at the money, right? Um, and now what I also um, kind of accidentally discovered, and I thought maybe uh, Peter would kind of like that he, he liked, uh, he loved a lot classical uh, mass, um, that this mapping function in the front, right, in the front of uh, this coefficient, right? In fact, this is very, very well known uh, function, which is called logarithmic mean, right? And it was studied like in back in 1972, and it is very well known that it separates um, um, geometrical and arithmetic mean in its true mean, it's between minimum and maximum. And then what you can do, and this is kind of elegant, I like that, uh, <clears throat> you can show uh, its monotonicity with respect to strike, looking at this presentation as an integral, right? And then differentiation under the integral. And if you do that, which is pretty straightforward, classical kind of calculus sort of right thing, uh, then what is important from all this analysis that this function is increasing function of K, which actually will be quite important in defining the relationship between black and bachelier skew, because what you're saying, if I map, um, um, if I map my black wall to bachelor wall, I put this uh, function, right? <clears throat> Which is this logarithmic mean. And this function is increasing, meaning that if you have negative skew, you should make it weaker, right? Because you, you are acting with the force, which is increasing function of strike, right? So you have to make it weaker, right? So because you, 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 go, um, you go negative, right? And then you're applying the map, which actually acts in the opposite manner, right? And if you have positive skews, so they both go in the same direction, then of course you will increase this um, skew because of this, um, this mapping, right? So this is your factor, right? And that what affects um, the skew. And that's kind of very simple, but you know, it took me a long time uh, to kind of uh, understand all that, how exactly what is the, the reason. And so this is our main conclusion, right? So because of this mapping is increasing function of K, uh, the strike then uh, bachelor year means Q, um, um, so switching from black to bachelor year makes Q uh, weaker when it's negative and vice versa when it's positive. And now uh, first thing what um, I decided to do, I'd like to wanted to look at the whole data and um, look at the data from, um, um, December 2019 to November uh, 13, so which include that uh, turbulent time, right? And uh, first of all, um, in fact, we, because it's real data, right? No one tells you that it's real from arbitrage. So uh, what um, has to be done, we have to follow, um, check no arbitrage um, conditions. Um, which I follow um, the paper, classical paper from 2005, uh, Peter and uh, Dilip, right? Um, and then follow some procedures given in a um, uh, later paper by Zhao and Hodges. And I remember Peter, when he was saying about volatility smile um, being free arbitrage, uh, he, was, he would say it in his um, uh, usual elegant ways that uh, <clears throat> volatility shouldn't be too steep or you know, it shouldn't be too concave, right? Because ultimately that's what, 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 what it was, right? 
All right, so and uh, uh, what we, first of all, what uh, on, on the data, right? So this is the claim, right? So the uh, walls are connected like that. And then we check this uh, using options data and mapping it or any option price can be mapped either to black or bachelor year wall, right? And then we can verify if it works or not, right? And uh, what was discovered that um, this mapping actually, in fact, map, mapping worked very, very well, except um, again, some extreme cases when you have very low strike and high in black implied wall, right? Um, and number of exceptions was not more than 2% at most. And more exception occur in the front months rather than further, right? And also all violations of this mapping occur after um, uh, starting uh, with April 20, right? So before crisis or like much later than crisis, you don't see that. But in that period, of course, because of extremality, actually you can break this relationship. If not, it's pretty well uh, respected. <clears throat> And the way you can, uh, in fact, convince yourself what you can do, um, you can look, um, well, first of all, actually, theoretically, uh, what we can do just without any data, first of all, we can look at graphs of mapped wall, which is mapped uh, by this formula, right? And then, um, so look, now we're not looking at the volatility, we're looking at this um, kind of generalized time, right? So it's like, um, you know, we're not looking at a wall, but wall with storage of time. And then you can look at theoretical versus uh, implied bachelor year. And then when they start to deviate, you say, okay, so here we might uh, have some deviations. And, um, and this is, um, uh, logarithm theta, right, which is uh, volatility with square root of time in, um, um, yeah, in the same here. And um, <clears throat> um, and this is case when our uh, strike is exactly, so this is at the money, and this is uh, kind of a very low strike, right, log k of f minus v, and this k equals f. And this is just theoretical thing, right, so you, you, you map so for each et at ln, you map this uh, bachelor year wall, right, according to this formula. And then from the other hand, because you fixed um, the strike, right, you can um, take this uh, logarithm wall, right, calculate option price and uh, map it to bachelor year wall, right? And this is the blue line. And they start to deviate around like one point something, right, when um, you have a volatility with square root of time becomes high enough. And here it happens um, um, uh, early, right? Because of extreme strikes. So this is just theoretical. This uh, you don't have to pay attention too much to that. Uh, but uh, what is more important now? This is real data, right? So what we can do, we can um, take this data and then um, uh, do some. Of course, first of all, we need to remove some non-arbitrary occurrences. Uh, then uh, do some cleaning, for example, if uh, uh, um, time value is very small, then we don't look at that. Or, uh, so there's some criteria, right? And then on the rest, which is actually basic, very bulk of the data, we, we look at um, uh, we look um, at two volatilities, um, log normal wall, implied wall, right, based on the option price. And then at the same time, bachelor year wall based on the same price. And then plot ver one versus another. And if, um, <clears throat> um, so, and uh, if uh, we map uh, uh, log normal wall by the formula, right, and see versus data, we see what happens then. If it is kind of true, we have to see um, line close to identity, which is, we cannot say it's like really clean and nice line, but it's not too bad, right? So it's actually pretty pretty neat. So there are some deviations um, here, but uh, in general, it follows identity lines. So this is actually, again, like just checking on the data, how well this relationship works, right? And it seems like it, it works, um, uh, pretty nicely, we use first nearby data and then the third nearby data. And now actually this is kind of um, maybe the most interesting part to me. Now we start in, um, um, comparing two smiles, um, looking at particular periods. <clears throat> and uh, what we did very straightforward, 
um, process, right? So for given contract, right, we, we fix nearby contract, given strikes, calculate implied volatilities, number one. Um, then uh, get that ATM, MTM bull, right, is directly from data or kind of some kind of interpolation. Then convert the strikes to normalize, right, because now we, we know the ATM, ATM bull. Then choose the range of normalized strike and plot walls corresponding uh, from uh, step number one, corresponding to this, um, 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 to, to, to those strikes, right? And then we also calculate this Q measure. Um, with the choice um, of um, this size zero, um, zero equals one, right? And then, so because we had a lot of data, so we made some choice. So kind of beginning of everything, right? When nothing was even um, was in the picture, so pretty normal. Then we look at this unusual date when it was positive skew. Um, then we use close to the crisis and then right after crisis. And this is the pictures what I show you. <clears throat> And in all these pictures, um, the um, uh, black wall is blue in the bachelor year, because in bachelor, but in order to compare them, we have to normalize, because remember, bachelor year wall is dollar wall, right? So to remove this um, dollar feature, we can normalize it by the future price, right? Right? And then compare um, this, um, this, these two walls. And here, what happened, this is kind of typical, this is kind of normal. That's what we probably will see again today, which I think I'm pretty conf confident that that's the picture we will see. So, uh, which means um, there is negative skew, right? So you look in the whole smile going negative way, right? This is uh, space on X axis log K over F. And then the um, bachelor yes smile, which is red is flatter, right? And there was only one, uh, which, and this is kind of typical for commodities, right? We have negative skew. However, there was this uh, brief period in January, beginning of January 20, when the prompt months, there was positive skew. And here, in fact, you have that phenomena that um, uh, bachelor year um, skew becomes strong, right? Because um, for the reason which we discussed, and that exactly illustrates um, on that point. Right, so we have, um, uh, and that was only three days, only for one contract, not in subsequent. So to your question, um, uh, there was exactly that situation that you have one picture in the one contract, but it was uh, probably kind of rare phenomenon. In fact, there was special political events at that time. Then we start uh, looking close, getting closer to um, the crisis time, and here we have. Um, very kind of different situation, right? So uh, look at March 9, right? And here, uh, this would start beginning of a sharp contact goal. Uh, this Q was um, very negative. Uh, walls, actually, if you see walls, right? Uh, 200, right? Uh, range of 200, it's, it's not 40% or anything like that. It's my, and then the difference is uh, more in bachelor year smile versus black smile. And here, in fact, we have, um, uh, you know, we, we look at um, now this um, bachelor year uh, smile becomes kind of positively, um, positively inclined, um, uh, which, um, yeah, can happen because of um, this, this, uh, um, the, this phenomena, right, um, in differences in, in two smiles. Um, here we have um, April 21st, right after the um, crisis time. Black skew is, was extremely strong, and we had very high goals. And uh, black uh, bachelor smile practically flat, right, slightly positive. Uh, and this is kind of beginning of more normality. This is much later, November 13. Um, we use option on December um, 21 contract. Uh, also, we look, remember I um, mentioned calculations uh, of um, uh, skew, and this is kind of generalized risk reversal. And um, here, oh, sorry, right. My light went somewhere down. Uh, we plotted black and bachelor risk reversal, and we choose second nearby contract because sometimes first nearby 
it's too much <laughs> volatility, right? Too, too, too crazy. Uh, but still, even for second nearby, you can see um, that uh, there was extremely um, negative skew um, uh, around, um, of course, that negative um, price date and um, some occasions where there was some positivity in bachelor year skew. Um, but um, rather than that, in fact, you, you can see normally um, the bachelor year skew is uh, close, not that far and um, high, right? That's what we expected, except that period where everything was uh, pretty, um, pretty extreme. And so the conclusions um, which um, we can say now um, that we show that relationship between black and bachelor implied walls, um, they established um, previously in um, the papers by Guzman uh, for very short maturities. This relationship, we, we saw that they hold very well under normal market conditions up to maturity of one year. Right, and the ratio of employed walls approximately is given by the ratio of corresponded moneyness of two models. It, it is not valid on, uh, for extreme strikes in very high black walls and um, um, data in general support this relationship, except um, events in uh, a, uh, spring 20 around that um, dramatic um, times. Um, if we use notion of normalized strike, uh, we can define risk reversal in non-parametric way. And um, on the typical case um, for commodities, which is negative skew, the bachelor year's smiles become flatter, which manifests itself in weaker risk reversal. And on the positive skew, which is atypical for commodities, bachelor year skew becomes stronger. In black skull, wall skew is likely to be steep under low prices and high walls. And the most of the difference what we see from the data occurred um, between these two models occurred in spring 2020. Um, and um, 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 and that's um, um, kind of, uh, so the, the main conclusion, I guess, that extreme, uh, extreme ties and crisis, um, um, it is better to use bachelier, uh, bachelier model, but um, um, in normal circumstances, um, they both are valid in not that much different as, as we saw. So I think I pretty much follow the time. So that wasn't too bad and I can, I can stop here. Thank you very much for listening to me and coming. I really appreciate you being here because we know uh, Peter was uh, very fond of this uh, event and uh, really want, I mean, I, I'm sure he wanted it to go on uh, and uh, be successful. So thank you very much um, for that, for coming. Uh, Rosa, thank you very much for a really fascinating talk. Um, any questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, it's Ken Winston. I have a question. Hi, Ken. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Good. Uh, so, uh, uh, really interesting talk. Um, so, it, it seems to me that the reason you have skews and smiles is because you're trying to cram a, a leptocurtic distribution into either a log normal or a normal distribution. Mm -hmm. um, so, neither one is actually right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the reason, uh, especially with some of the examples you gave, it, it seems to me intuitively the reason that Bachelier has a, <clears throat> a flatter um, skew is that it attaches more probability to those you know, very rare outcomes that uh, than a log normal does. And so it, isn't, isn't that basically the intuition here that you're, you're kind of fattening the tails uh, with with a normal as opposed to a log normal because log, log normal cuts off the tails altogether on the, on the yeah, low side. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, that's what you said. Um, sorry, I didn't catch you. Kenneth, right? Yeah. Thank yeah. you for this remark. Yes. Well, to me, I, I tried. This is true, of course, because that's what I showed on um, this, you know, uh, boundness of uh, black black uh, option price versus bachelor being unbounded. You know, that's uh, very correct. Uh, but uh, I tried to kind of rather make that um, relationship based on this um, um, mapping factor, right, which is um, 
um, uh, increase in functional striking, this mapping becomes even stronger when you have uh, when, because essentially you, what you're doing, right? You map you map one volatility to another approximately, right? But uh, this happens on the very high volatilities when when crisis time, right? So this this mapping um, becomes the effect of this mapping becomes even more pronounced. You see what I'm saying, right? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh, right. So that's kind of was my point. I, um, but of course, you, your remarks, of course, also quite valid. I agree. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else questions? Rose, I have a question. If you go back mm -hmm. to your formula mm -hmm. that uses the ratio of those two different moneynesses, right? You mm -hmm. know, like on page thirteen. Right now, I would assume that that well-known formula of Pat Hagen's like the implied volatility, you, the bl bl black vols you get if you price all options at a fixed um, Bachelier implied, you get the square, the square root profile, right? You know, you're familiar with that, right? If I, let's say, price a, a suite of options for, for all strikes at a single mm -hmm. Gaussian vol, and I ask what implied, what skew do I produce in a lot normal world from mm -hmm. those prices, I get the square root profile. Yeah. Um... I think that's due to Pat Hagen, I believe, that formula. Could be, yes. Uh, well, this uh, could be, um, uh, Leo, I can, um, I mean, I have not looked at that. It's true. Yeah. I did only kind of empirical study, right? And um, I did not look, I look at mapping volatility, but not necessarily skew, right? Yeah. So um, yeah. Hagen, that sounds very familiar. I'm sure I, yeah. I look at um, um, the, this, this paper, so. Um, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe it's worth of looking at that. Yeah, because you know what I think is sort of weird is this. So we know basically that for a flat Bachelier world, flat vol Bachelier world, mm -hmm. what profile we get in the log normal implies, right? Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. You have a formula mm -hmm. that links the log normal implied to the normal purely based on the ratio mm -hmm. of those two money. This is right. I think that they were never... Uh, such a formula could never work because in the flat Bachelier world, we have a square root profile of the log normal vols. So in some other mm -hmm. Bachelier uh, pro, uh, skew, right, it'd be some other relationship. It's hard to believe that a single formula, right, relates to two implieds. No but matter that's what, what I showed to you, right, yeah. Leo? I showed you it's on amazing. the database. Yeah. It's practically yeah. always the case. It's amazing because you would think that the configuration of the Gaussian mm. skew would determine what the nature of that form. You know what I mean? Well, uh, but, yeah. I mean, I did not look at again. This is empirical, right? Uh, we look, and he says uh, short maturities, right? That's what he claims, right? And then it's okay, short maturities. But let's look at the data. It's not only short maturities, right? And then I should try to show you these graphs, right? Where actually I can, in theory, I can uh, see the deviations. Um, but uh, up to one year, like I said, uh, I showed you this, uh, uh, you know, this, this scatter plot. They're pretty, pretty close to identity, so it works. Believe or not. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, so yeah, it is amazing. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. Um, so you have like one option at the, one strike. You know the Bachelier implied, right? Mm -hmm. Use your formula mm -hmm. and you get the, the log normal implied. Correct. Mm hmm even right, though you have right. any other and information. This, and it's pretty accurate, right? And we did not cheat. We just look at the data. Yeah. We look for pure data and convert it to yeah. two models, right? And then look, and the mapping is, except, of course, except extreme cases, extreme, so yes, where yes. it starts to break. In extreme cases, it can be, it's it's equivalent. that right? Either it's um, a long maturity or high wall, which is pretty much the same, right? So time is, variance is time. We know, like Peter always saying that. Yes. Yeah. Right? stochastic or deterministic, but that's pretty much it. <clears throat> right. Well, thank, thank you. you. That was, um, I was, I was, I was going to make a, a, a comment, um, you know, about, about, you know, that, you know, I guess there are ways to, to, um, allow bl a black's model to price, you know, option on spreads with negative prices. You can buy, you know, by, by you're changing the displace or shift the, underlying variable right in the model so let's say you're yeah. doing oil you would say that the random variable is like you know the price yeah. the plus yeah, a few, like 
kind of no shift it log normal. Shift log right? normal, right, right. Yeah, well, right. so and so and and so you you have enough of a shift, so it's it's enough enough to deal with the negative area. So basically, you're saying even even though the, even the price can go negative, mm -hmm. uh, it's even like on spread. The spread can go if it's zero. Say zero becomes like fifty, some number, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I understand and, what you're saying. But I, but I I guess the pro I guess the problem there is now you're now you're looking at the the volatility still is going to be in the in the black model a percentage volatility while it should be an absolute you know price volatility yeah, right yeah that so i guess right. you know you mm -hmm. also adjust that too in some sense I, I wonder if you plotted all this all this out and you did those you know twerks if you if you get, if you get similar results like I'm, I'm not sure if that if that how that would work out so i don't know if you've if you, if you um, looked at yeah, that, I don't know. Like... To me, um, well, I mean, like to me, I like I um, I know shifted log normal in um, commodities, especially. Um, I know um, people use that, but um, um, you know, um, because of Peter in, in general, like um, you know, I really like this idea of compare these two pure, 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 pure models, right? The original model by Bachelier. Right, classical and elegant, and from 19th century, right, and mm -hmm. this uh, black model, which we all use. So to me, it was um, kind of pure. And um, um, but I don't. I mean, I don't know what if you use shifted log normal, what you, you can achieve. I'm not sure, um, honestly, Arman. Um, and that was not kind of my my purpose. Yeah, I was, I, I'm just thinking. Just thinking if somebody w w wants to, you know, has a has. A, a black model at his disposal, and he doesn't have the other model. He wants to do some analysis. I think probably, I think in those, I think when when the oil market did have that problem, I think a lot of people just tried to do that as a way to, because they didn't have access to the other model. You know, they, they tried to do it like that as a way to get mm -hmm. a, um, a rough kind answer. Of the, the kind right. of negative prices, you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But right. the bachelor year model is very simple. So why don't you... No, I'm saying, I, I, I guess no, I guess if someone had had his, his on his spreadsheet, just the regular right. yeah. black yeah. shows, well, and he was trying to price all of a sudden on that one day when, when it went negative, he had to do something fast. So maybe say, well, look, let me, let me shift the price of oil from negative 40 to, to let's say, you know, you know, some 80 plus the price, you know, so I can, right. I can shift it up and see if I get a number. I'm sure that was being done by some people. Uh, I, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's yeah. true. Um, yeah, I have not. I was, I actually saw something similar uh, in kind of like another paper, but they also use uh, bachelor, um, pure bachelor, not not shifted log normal. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I will ha be happy to look um, how it is related, etc. you know, just to the literature. Um, so yeah, so it's interesting. It's a different angle, sort of. Yes, uh, I agree. Uh, All right. Tony Corso here. Um, there is a rich history of people adding 100 to the uh, heating oil and uh, uh, gasoline uh, crack to avoid um, getting a negative crack price. Mm -hmm. um, but, and but, then but, doing it, a guy named Vonderheide back in the 90s right. was the yeah, first guy to do it. Uh -huh. So how do, you, uh, how, do you, how do you adjust the volatility um, variable? Ah, the volatility variable becomes completely unrelated to the implied volatility of crude or heating oil. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> well, I guess you know. I I, I guess that the, I'm saying, I'm saying that, that 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 number not necessarily has anything to do with it. I'm saying how does how would you equate that to the volatility you use in the in the normal black shows versus doing this adjustment? You know, because you have to sort well, of then I guess look at the absolute. Uh, you, what you do is change. you'd assume you'd you'd look at the implied volatility, the black implied volatility of heating oil the black implied volatility of uh, crude, you'd stick a finger up in the air to get the windage of what you thought the correlation was. And you would crank that through a black on, uh, let's say the crack was four bucks. Um, you'd put it on a $4 call or you put it on a $100 call uh, or you put it on a $104 call uh, 
right. and use the volatility that you came out with applying the the correlation. Um, yeah, so you just feel like basically, you know, when you do it, you, you just take the, you know, correlation times times two sigmas become really like a, a one asset. Yes, really, you so it become, it becomes a one asset, right? One asset. It's and like you're, it's, you're the way you would do a right. The way you would do like a quanto option, you have to sort of change the price of the forward by using the correlation and the, and the volatilities of each one. We give you like an adjusted forward, uh, right? Yeah. But yeah, something a, like that. There's a yeah. little subtle. There's a little subtle thing there in that a crack option is an option on the difference of two prices, yeah. whereas an FX mm -hmm. option or a quanto option is an option on the ratio of two prices. Right. So it is somehow more correct. Forgive me, three glasses of wine, forty thousand <laughs> feet in the air. I'm not quite sure what I'm saying, um, but. Uh, um, but also, you know, also could, uh, could be also like the Margrave, the Margrave model to be used then also, right? In yeah. Some, some, you know, the uh, just exchange of Bill, Wonder, right? That's all. Bill, Bill Margrave, who's actually disappeared. I'm, I wonder what happened to, to, to Bill. He sort of disappeared. I did have a question. If you wanted to build a mm -hmm. Bachelier, uh equivalent of a Cox Ross Rubenstein tree, would you just assume that the up and down probabilities are 50-50 and crank through an absolute dollar number is your volatility? I think so, yeah. I think so, right? That makes sense. With yeah, some, should, with, so with some, is that a big some, sigma is that a big yeah. sigma square root of t with a sigma plus? Yeah. Is, is that, instead of being the price times sigma square root of t, or just the price plus? Uh, at the, the absolute absolute well it's the price times e to something in about right that's right so instead of e it becomes just the it becomes the, the value times it right mm -hmm. it would be instead of having it as, as a as a um as an extra log log to change it just becomes that same way you would build like a confidence interval you know when you say what's the common span plus 95 percent uh, you know up and down you'd say if it's log right. normal you would do multiplied if it's a uh, absolute price will be just plus you know I, plus, I was plus just, the percentage a yeah, minus. i was just trying to think of how i would americanize a a calendar spread option using the bachelier and my mind immediately drifts to trees right. um uh trying to get the american exercise feature in there but it's yeah, i think what calendar yeah. spread options are being they priced on virtually exactly so in you map yeah. uh, everything it's um, a classical paper right by carmona where he uh, there's all this uh, moment matching and stuff and etc cetera, etc cetera. this is uh, well known okay i'm being told that we have to uh, end this because students may yeah. have a class uh, rosa thank you for a really interesting talk thank you. I learned a lot yeah thank, thank you, you for, for, for that. cheering this seminar i really appreciate it because that was my only day i could do because then i start my uh, teaching on thursdays and will be much more